don't take also means a risk in itself. Like yeah, at certainly. the point that the two men are talking in the rice field, they have quite a lot of dialogue there. It took us two days to shoot that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that, yeah that's it's very hard. It's very hard. Because yeah, they made mistakes or have to really shoot again. So two days. Maybe seven takes. So, yeah. yeah. And all the time standing in the rice field. Yeah, the first time that it's we said that. Cruel, the right <laughs> yeah, it's very cold the first time. And in the following day, it's better. It's warmer. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really hard to shoot a one take thing, especially for the actors, because. They're so used to the cut to cut things in cinema, yeah. where you can ex you can manipulate things. Yeah. It's more on the director's side and the cinematographer. For a one frame shot, it's hard because for the actors, they're gonna do it once only, and yeah. it should for, look for, truthful. Yeah. For know. people who don't like long takes, they always suggest it's easy to do it like. It's that. hard. Yeah. It's hard. Sometimes you have to. Wait for another day. Yeah, well, you, you know. have the experience. Everything is magnified on the screen. You tell them that you know, if you do a fake thing on this on this thing, then it's going to be magnified. It's going to be fake. So we have to reshoot the whole thing again. So it's it's easier if you do the montage thing, the Eisenstein school of the filmmaking. Yeah. But with Andrew Bazan's work, where you have to go for the truth, it's harder. Okay. It's harder. Yeah. And anybody else? Go ahead. Uh, did he do the film deliberately in black and white? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I shot it in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> I shot it in black and white. So not, not in color? No, no. It's black and white. Okay. All the way. All the way. I used the very cheap Panasonic camera yeah. with my old Canon lenses. Yeah. So right. a mix of the new and the old. Yeah. Looks good. Mm -hmm. So, I come back uh, to the like the political history thing. Mm -hmm. uh, for somebody who wants to make a movie on, mm -hmm. on like the dictatorship time of Marcos, in fact, there is there's not much military in the film. It's like for like for yeah. eighty percent, it's just uh, a village life. It's like, not yeah. like a Hobbit village, but it's, it's still it's, it's village life. Yeah, I make it like a ghost, just hovering, hovering foreboding yeah. thing that you know hell is gonna come yeah. so you, you're talking about you know two years where everything is premeditated on the part of the military of Marcos but the village is so innocent about it and they only realize that you know the character of heading the military coming and boom by 1972 it's all hell it's a very very planned thing for them so I made it that way also where, you know, you can feel that the village is really innocent about it and then suddenly hell is coming and you couldn't do anything about it. It's a well-planned thing, yeah. I was a little bit surprised about the guerrillas. Uh, Is that? The, the guerrillas, the people's yeah. army. The, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe my mistake, but I thought at some point in 72, they were the good guys, right? Yeah, yeah, the new people's army, the communist party. Yeah, but in, here in the movie, they are like like a bunch of... No, no, it's a, you you made a mistake on that. Yeah, militia. It's the militia. Yeah, it's the militia. It's, the, it's not the new people's army. Ah. So this why, is the, this is called like, the... Why this, they look like really at the... Well, the, they... Marcos, the military created the civilian home defense unit. That's them. Uh, they armed some, you know, some you know, nasty guys to, okay, okay, okay. to just so terror on the, the so population. Good, so good, I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, they always make, 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 make a mistake of that. But Marcos did that. They armed some, you know, nasty guys. They, they could have this kind of Che Guevara outfit. Uh, yeah, they do that. Yeah, they, the civilian home defense unit, CHDF. They're more, they, they terrorize the villages because yeah. the military will give them power. All this, you know, all the, the arms and the, you know, just let them lose there and then just sow terror on the population. They're more terrible in terms of, you know, sowing terror and doing tortures, you know. I, I learned something. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, how much terror was from the other side? Because uh, I don't think there's anybody in this, uh, in this room in favor of the Marcos regime, but how? How big was the danger in the time that 
the Philippines would be would be transforming in, let's say, a Marxist state like North Korea or something like that. Well, there's the it everything coincided with the Marcos uh, Marcos is uh, you know in position of martial law, but then the communist party is uh, getting stronger, but. Uh, they miscalculated things. By the time that Marcos left, the, the left is also in total disarray. They, 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 they divided into two factions, and they're fighting each other. And, you know, the revolution went kaput. Yeah, it didn't work. Yeah, it could have been, you know, maybe a better option for us, you know, it's a, it's a very hypothetical thing. It didn't happen anyway, so, yeah. Pete, um, the horizon was slanting sometimes. Did you have special reasons, special moments to decide to go? Maybe the position of the camera didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it was just by accident. Yeah, it maybe, wasn't yeah, like yeah, that yeah. emotional or... Yeah, in some parts you couldn't, you know, Sometimes, you know, there are, there are parts where this really happened. The, the camera is sinking because the, the sun is like quite soft. Uh, slowly, slowly, you, don't, you, you really don't realize that the camera is slowly sliding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Is this politics a major uh, motivation to make films? Uh, that was my fault again. But, uh, <laughs> what was the question? If politics is one of your main motivations. Well, every every everything that I do is very political. Maybe it's just maybe if it's just a shot of a Filipino working on his bicycle, it's very political because I'm already sharing to you the struggle of my people. That makes things political for me. Yes. You wanna do some promotion for tomorrow? <laughs> Yeah, the 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 is bothered by a storm right now. It's being bothered by a storm, so it's the anniversary of last year's storm. It's strange, and very ironic, because uh, the one that you will see tomorrow is about the biggest storm that hit the world last year, and it happened in my country, and I followed the lives of these kids. Now it's happening again. Just this very moment, the Philippines is ground zero for this very big storm. If you watch CNN today, it's about this big storm in the country. It's the anniversary this week, and it's happening again. Good. What time in this room? In, uh, exactly. Quarter past nine. Nine o'clock tomorrow? Nine o'clock. In the evening. I hope. In the evening. <laughs> it's a short film. It's two hours. So. <laughs> two hours, 38 minutes. To be and then sad. there's also a Q&A with Bertha from the back. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, it's your last chance. Show up tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering about the, the older woman who was leaving the movie pretty early on. Yeah. And uh, I was wondering uh, why her son was killed. Uh, I didn't really concretize the whole thing, but it's about the early killings of uh, Muslim civilians in the in our village. There are mysterious killings of Muslim civilians before that, but we know it's the military afterwards. They're sowing, you know, this divide between the Christians and the Muslims. Yeah. And I was also wondering about the song that she sings. Is that... It's about his son. Yeah, yeah. but is it something, a, a classical thing, or is it... Well, uh, it's lost now. In, in the film, I introduce uh, three Malay practices that's been banished. Uh, the, the, the storytelling, we used to do that before Christians and Islamic, the Islam's came. It's a practice where we tell our stories for 24 hours, 30 hours. We sing our stories in a cappella, our sorrows, our experiences. We have that before, but now it's gone. Is it the text, is that something that's always the same or is it improvised? Well, I, I wrote the song, but it's based on that thing. Because I saw these things when I was a kid. People are still telling their stories and their sorrows under mango trees or what, they, they just mm -hmm. talk and talk and mm -hmm. in a cappella, they sing it with some hymns, you know. Mm -hmm. But now it's gone, this, these practices are gone. Even the burning of the dead is gone. The, 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 the dancing of uh, the healing with the shaman, the woman, it's gone also. It's, 
It's being forbidden by the Islamic laws of the South now. They banish these prophecies. We're just trying to reclaim this in the film anyway, so. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.